Amen. All right, to begin the sermon this morning, I want to have you turn also, keep your hand here, grab a bulletin if you need to do so, and go to Matthew 1 with your other hand, Matthew chapter number 1. I want to make some quick opening remarks before we actually get to the text for a few minutes. I'm going to read something to you as well. So I'm going to be preaching this morning on a subject that every pastor in the United States of America that lives in our country needs to be preaching about on a regular basis. A a major problem, the biggest problem, the biggest sin that takes place in our country, and that is the mass murdering of innocent children. I'm going to be preaching on the subject of abortion this morning. Now, I just want to give you some statistics before I I get into this to give you the idea of why this is such a big deal, the understanding of why this sin of the United States of America is such a big deal. Now, Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court decision, took place in 1973, and since then there has been 60 million 60 million babies that have been murdered. 60 million babies have been murdered. Now, I've seen this comparison beforehand. I did a little bit of additional math just to give you more of a perspective on this. But here's a list, just as a perspective, of the world wars, more of the major wars. These are considered the world wars that we have been in as a country since the origination of the United States of America. The Revolutionary War, this is how many deaths took place. There's a recorded 4,435 deaths in the Revolutionary War. The Civil War, this is both sides, including both sides, just shy of of half a million. It's 498,332 deaths. World War I, there was 116,708 deaths. World War II, there were 407,316 deaths. Korea, the Korean War, there were 25,604 deaths. The Vietnam War, the Vietnamese War, there were 58,168 deaths. Like I said, there are 60 million babies, 60 million babies since 1973, the passing of Roe versus Wade. 60 million babies have been aborted or been killed is what it is, to be blunt. Now, I did a little bit of an additional math. So if you add up all of those numbers of what we just read a moment ago, of all of the world wars that have taken place, you have 1,110,563 deaths. 1,110,563 deaths. That's all of the world wars that we've been in. If we add up every person that's died, and we take that number, and we turn it into a percentage of 60 million, do you know what you have? This is the additional math that I've done. 1.85%. 1.85% is what you have of the the 60 million babies that have been aborted. That That is just an insane number. An insane number. So there's 60 million children have been aborted since 1973. Now, first off, I want to begin by giving you the definition of life according to the Bible. The definition of life according to the Bible. Go to Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14, where you should have your left hand. Isaiah chapter number 7. I want you to look at verse number 14. Now, to a person that doesn't believe the Bible, this portion means nothing. But we're going to get, according to God, according to the Bible's definition... Of what is life? When does life begin? Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14, a prophecy of Jesus Christ. It says this, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So notice that it says a virgin shall conceive. Now if you flip over and you look at Matthew chapter number 1, And I want you to look there at verse number 23 where this same exact verse is quoted in the New Testament. You'll notice a a small difference when it's translated from Greek to English. But we know, of course, that the Bible is inspired by God. It is a perfect translation. So we can learn from the difference. Look there at verse number 23 in Matthew 1. It says this, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. So I don't know if you caught the difference or not or have already seen this. But the Bible says in Isaiah 7, 14, I'll read it for you one more time, a virgin shall 
conceive. So notice, a virgin shall, it uses the word conceive, the moment, referring to the moment of conception. Then you look over at Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 23, and it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. You know what that tells you? At the moment of conception, the very moment of conception, do you know how you could word that, or do you know what that woman is with at the moment of conception? She's with a child immediately. That's the Bible's definition. Now, if you don't believe the Bible, whatever. But I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the Bible's definition, God's definition, on when he believes, or when, you know, not he believes, when he knows, and when he tells us, and what we should believe on when, it act, when life actually begins. So it actually begins at conception. I want you to go to the book of Psalms now. Go to Psalms chapter number what, Psalm 139, verse 13. Psalm 139, verse 13. Psalm 139, verse 13. Now, this portion of the sermon is still more introductory. I want, you, I want to show you uh, God's love for the unborn child and the, the time and the work that he invests in a child. The Bible teaches that God loves the child even while the child is in its mother's womb. God knows the child even while it's in its mother's womb. Go to Psalm chapter number 139 and look at verse number 13. The Bible says this, <clears throat> David speaking, for thou hast possessed my reins. That's like his mind. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. And then he says this, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect saying not complete yet while he's still he's being formed it says this. And in thy book all my members were written. Talking about all the parts of his body which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Now, I don't know if you understand exactly what this is saying. It's a little bit wordy but, uh, you know, compared to a lot of portions of the Bible, but it describes beautifully how God forms the baby while it's in its mother's womb. And not only does God form the baby while it's in its mother's womb, God already had every body part. God already had every member. God already had every single aspect of your body written in a book before it had even been developed. He says while he was unperfect, before he was complete, before his body was fully formed, God knew exactly what that baby was going to look like. God had a plan for every part of that baby's body, and he had it written in a book, showing that God cares, showing that God loves the baby even while it's in its mother's womb, showing that God loves the child and is working and has a plan for the child even while it's in its mother's womb. I want you to turn now to Jeremiah chapter number 1, verse number 5. We're going to look at a few of these passages pretty quickly. Jeremiah chapter number 1, verse number 5. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter number 1. Verse number five, the Bible says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, of course, uh, this is specifically geared toward Jeremiah, but we can learn from this as well. And he's speaking to Jeremiah, and he even says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before he was even formed in his mother's stomach or his mother's belly, he knew him. Also, one thing just uh, uh, you know, in, to be informative, just educational, is you can see that the word womb and belly are used interchangeable in this particular verse. Just to understand definitions here, it says this, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And he says, And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. So you can see to a certain extent that they're used interchangeable. So first he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And then he says, Before you came forth out of your mother's womb. He said, I sanctify thee. So notice he had a plan for Jeremiah, had a job for Jeremiah. Before Jeremiah was even formed, he knew him. David says the same thing, that all of his members were written down in a book before he was even complete, before he was even fully developed. Go to Job chapter number 31, verse number 15. Job chapter number 31, verse number 15. 
right before the book of Psalms, Job chapter number 31, verse number 15, it says this, Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one, watch this, fashion us in the womb. So notice that God is the one directly making or fashioning, excuse me, a baby while it is still in its mother's womb. That's what I want you to understand is God is fashioning and he's making the child while still in, yet in its mother's womb. Go to Psalm chapter number 22, verse number 10. 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 The Bible reads, I was cast upon thee from the womb. And then he says this. It's obviously a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it says this. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Notice women belly used interchangeable again. Go to God. We'll stay in the, the Old Testament. Just go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number 5. I'm going to skip a couple of these. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 Verse number five. I want you to notice that God puts time into, that God is the one directly fashioning and making every child while yet still in its mother's womb. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number five. The Bible reads, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit. Now what is the Spirit referring to? It's referring to life, isn't it? referring to the life that God gives. Another further proof that the baby is alive while it's in its mother's womb. womb. According to the Bible, of course. Ecclesiastes 11.5 again. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. So again, what does it say? These are the works of God. God is the one fashioning the child. God's the one forming the, the child's leg, the child's arm, the child's ears, the facial features of the baby. God is the one directly involved in the works while the baby is being formed, while the baby is developing. It's not just, you know, happen chance. It's not just a coincidence. God specifically forms and fashions each child. Why? Because God loves and cares for every single child. That's what you walk away with. Amen. Once you understand that, then you know and you understand that God cares for every child. Number one, we see that the baby, that, that what is inside of the mother's womb is alive, and the Bible refers to it as a child. Number two, then we've seen and we've looked at, according to the Bible, that God gets directly involved in every baby and every child while it is growing and while it's incomplete, while it's unperfect, according to David. And he fashions and he forms every child. Why? Because God loves all of the children. All of the children, even while yet they're still in their mother's womb. Even before they're born. Even while they're in their mother's belly, like the Bible says. Now, even according to every scientific definition, I'm not focusing on all the way back to conception this morning. I'm going to be focusing on the 60 million babies. And I'm going to get to the timeline and when these babies are aborted and how this works in the system and all that in just a moment. So I want you to understand the scope of the sermon. I'm not focusing all the way back unto conception. But even by science, even by the definition of science, every definition of life, according to science, at conception, that is a living being. Whatever you want to try to refer to it, the Bible calls it a child. If you don't believe in the Bible, whatever. But whatever you know, turn, if you even step back from a secular perspective is what I'm trying to do right now, that is a living being by every definition of life according to science. Right. If they found some bacteria on Mars today, you know what the headlines would read tomorrow? Life found on Mars. Some bacteria. And you want you. And what's going on at the moment of conception? It's growing. It's multiplying immediately. Immediately. I'm not even going to focus on you know all of the different uh, you know uh, uh, the the birth control methods that are used. All of these different types of things. But we are against all of that as well. Any sort. Of, we believe that that women and men should be having as many children as they possibly. Hand. It's a blessing to have children. It's a blessing to have children and to have kids. But that's not the whole scope of the sermon this morning. I'm going to be preaching against the wicked, supposed medical practice that is going on in the United States of America 
today. And it is one of the most evil practices that have ever been implemented or instituted in all of history. 60 million innocent, unborn children, babies, have been killed since 1973. Think about that. 60 million people. Of course, some of them may have passed away. Many of them probably would have passed away by this, by, by this point. 60 million more people would be living on this earth today and have a chance at life. Living their lives, have a name, have preferences, have likes, have you know, friends, have relationships with people. It's disgusting. It's Man. evil and it's wicked. That's, right. and that's what people need to understand. This is, you know, abortion. And we'll, we'll get to this. Let me just, I need to hold, pull back the reins for a moment. I'm going to have you turn to another passage real quick. Let me have you turn to another passage. We're not going to be using uh, um, as much Bible again here for a few moments. I want you to go to Genesis chapter number 9. You're going to wait on me again. I'm going to give you some more, you know, statistics here for just a moment. Now, like I said, I'm going to be focusing on the 60 million babies that have been that have recorded, 60 million recorded babies that have been aborted um, since 1973. Now, 66% of abortions take place at or around eight weeks. At or around eight weeks. The majority of women don't even know that they're pregnant until uh, I haven't. I didn't look this up, but about how long? I'm sure the women in here that have had many kids know. Uh, what would you say? One to two weeks. Six weeks, about six weeks, four. So right around four to six weeks, women have an idea that they're pregnant, right around that time. The majority of, 66% of abortions takes place around eight weeks. Now, just to give you an idea of, of what is in the mother's womb, which we know it's a child. But at that time, this is what you have. Just to give you an idea, at eight weeks, your baby's heartbeat beats with a regular rhythm. So there's a heartbeat, of course, there's a heart, and it's beating at that moment with a regular rhythm. The arms and legs are growing longer, so they've had arms and legs, of course, already, to the point where now it's, and fingers and toes have, have begun to form already. And then not only that, their arms are able at this point to flex at the elbows and the wrists. So they have, they have arm at eight weeks, that child and that baby already has a regular heartbeat, a regular rhythm to its heartbeat. And then it also has arms and legs. The fingers and toes are beginning to form, and they're able even to flex at the joints, specifically the wrists and the elbows at eight weeks. Um, at this point also, eyes begin to develop pigment. So they're even getting pigment in their eyes. And genitals are forming too, although it's still too soon to know whether you are expecting a boy or a girl. These external features aren't the only things developing. The internal organs are making strides too. As the intestines form, they start to take up space in the umbilical cord because there's not enough room in your baby's abdomen. Yet, even at this early stage, it says this, the intestines are working to carry waste away from the body. So even at this early stage, of course, they're not consuming food in the same sense, but they're receiving their nutrition through the umbilical cord, and they are already using, their intestines are already functioning at eight weeks to get you know, the waste or the bad stuff out of their body from the nutrition that's already being fed into their body. I mean, they have fully functioning intestines at this point, at eight weeks. I mean, get an idea of what this is at this point, of how developed, you know, what stage this is. Then it says this, a month from now, when there's no room, no more room in your little one's belly, the intestines will move out of the cord and back into the abdomen. Now, who in their right mind is stupid enough to say that that's not a human being? Who in their right mind is, is dumb enough, according to any definition, to say that that's not a human being? You'd have to be a total and absolute idiot. Man. You'd have to be dumb, number one, or you'd have to have uh, your own evil agenda. I mean, what in the world is it then? A giraffe or an elephant or something? I mean, get real. You know, and they always want to use the word fetus, don't they? You know why? To make themselves feel better. That's why. They want to refer to it as a fetus. That's, you know, that's the only reason why. It's because they want to try to desensitize people. They don't want to, they want to take away the aspect of emotions that you have. But, you know, when you start describing, just rip the song list off too. You know, when you start describing 
what this, what this you know, baby actually looks like, you know when you start realizing that it, that it is just that, a baby and a child, it's very clear it has pigmentation in its eyes already, it's using its intestines, it has, and it, you know, it's able to, uh, it, you know, uh, to, to bend its wrist, it's, it's a child. By any definite, it's, it's clearly and 100% a baby. There's no way around it. Right. And, and another thing, too, quickly. You know, virtually, you know, so often when, when you hear the word fetus, what, what setting is it always used in? It's almost always used in the medical field and specific to abortion every time, isn't it? I mean, it's used in other form. I realize that it's used other places. But oftentimes, I know my wife, uh, I was thinking about this just a few minutes ago before I, I came up to preach. Oftentimes, my wife will use an app to trace or track the development or the progress of the child while it's growing. And you know, it, oftentimes, not, maybe not always, but it doesn't just refer to it as a fetus, does it? Any, any women that may use that app. Very often, I've read those things before, and it'll actually call it a baby. You know why? Because it knows. Because the person writing that app knows that you're going to be keeping that. But you know, the woman that's going to be killing her baby, they don't want to call it a baby, do they? What do they want to do? They want to call it a fetus. Anything other than a baby. Anything other than, you know, anything that can try to make you think that this isn't a, a human being. If you took a picture and showed that to all these women before they aborted or murdered their own children, and that's what they're doing, they're an accomplice to murder... If you showed that or explained to them what was in their stomach at that time, it, you know, I don't, I don't know the, the minds and thoughts I can't say for certain, but I would hope that a lot of these women would back out of that. Right. And they would, maybe they've just been duped or fooled into thinking that what they are you know, you know, uh, getting ready to go through with or carry through with you know, isn't a baby. I would hope so. But either way, that wouldn't matter because that it's murder whether you understand what you're doing or not. Right. Right. <clears throat> Now, I chose to preach on this, and, and, and people may already know why, what the purpose is, but there was a new bill that was passed at, at a state level in the state of New York recently. A lot of people have had uh, mis misunderstandings of what this bill is. Has everybody heard about the bill? Everybody pretty much has heard about the bill. So there was this, uh, a bill that was passed at a state level in the state of New York. Now, supposedly the purpose of this bill is to, you know, like they always say, it's to protect women's rights just in case there's a federal law that's passed in the future that prohibits uh, abortions. They still would have the right within their own independent state. Supposedly, that's the reason for it. But it also went ahead and it, and it lengthened or gave you know, more supposed freedoms to the woman. And a couple of these things are, is now a woman is, is, is able to have an abortion, to have an abortion all the way up through the third trimester. Now, the third trimester is the last trimester, and there are no limitations on the weeks at all, period. Do you know what that means? Up until the very last minute before the baby is born. That's what that means. Up until the very last second until the child is born, they can kill the baby. That's what they can do. Now, of course, this is not, and, it, and I've read some stuff where people have misunderstood this and thought that it's just, you know, supposedly, let's say, at least for what the bill calls for, and I'm going to read you the bill in just a moment, but at least for what the bill calls, it's not just, you know, they walk in and they say, I want to have an abortion and the baby, you know, the baby's going to be born in a couple of minutes. I'm sure there are doctors that would do that. I'm sure that they, they're, they're corrupt enough in the first place, but that's not the purpose of the bill. Supposedly, the purpose is that if the woman is having complications and it's maybe life-threatening, I don't know to what extent, it's, it, they basically wrote it in a very arbitrary way to where it's up to the woman and the doctor, number one. Now, number two is if the child has some sort of deformity. Now, I'm gonna, let me go ahead and read the bill to you. So this is the code section. It's public health section 2599-AA. Section 4164 is repealed now. That was a former uh, bill or code that had been passed. Uh, statutory definition of illegal abortion as of Je uh, January 22nd, 19, or 2019. Abortion is no longer in the state's penal code. This means health care providers acting in good faith may not be held criminally liable. So no one can basically be held criminal, criminally liable for any abortions or anything, any doctor or anyone that participates in abortion 
As long as they testify and say, pretty much, I did that in good faith. So basically, this is what's going on. From my perspective, I think it's clear. This is meant to cover the doctor. Maybe if something ends up happening afterwards, maybe if, let's, I'll give you an example like this. Let's say maybe the mother is unconscious and the doctor makes a decision to abort the baby. Think this is a real scenario that could happen. And the doctor, the woman's terrified and she's freaked out when she wakes up and finds out that her baby's dead because she wasn't able to deliver the baby. And you know what the doctor's going to say when he stands on the stand? I did that to save her life and I was acting in good faith. I was acting in good practice. That's what the, whether that's the purpose for it or not, that, and I believe that it is, that's what it would cover. That's the type of scenario that this would cover. I'm just giving you just an example. Now, and that's just one that I made up myself. I haven't heard anyone say that or anything. This is the statutory definition of legal abortion. Within the first 24 weeks or after 24 weeks, if necessary, to preserve the mother's health. So it's not even. Notice how, how arbitrary this is. It's not even for the woman, you know, uh, for possible fatality or for her dying. It's just if Necessary to preserve the mother's health. Do you know how far that could go? You might have nerve problems the rest of your life. That, I mean, that, that, that could fit in with this. You might have, you know, just any small, any, any sort of ailment the rest of your life. That would include the mother's health, wouldn't it? So basically, if your health could be threatened in any possible way, you can pull the plug on that baby's life at any time, seconds before it's born. Seconds before it's born. A woman could do that. Not only that, it says this. To preserve the mother's health, health, and then it says this. Or if the fetus isn't viable. Now, first off, I should have looked this up. When do they supposedly say that it's no longer a fetus? Because I know that they try to say that's a, a stage of its life. Does anyone know by chance when they say that it's not a fetus any longer? But I want you to notice here that they're still trying to refer to it as a fetus even after those 24 weeks still. Did you notice that? So notice how what a hoax and a sham that this is because I'm almost positive they don't, and I should have looked this up, but I'm almost positive that they don't say seconds before the baby's born that it's still a fetus, do they? I would almost guarantee not. You know why they, they, would, they would still include it and, and, and define it or term it as a fetus in this case? It's because they're still about to kill it. That's the only reason why they call it a fetus in the first place is to try to, to, it's to, try to make their conscience feel a little bit better about what they're doing. It's to try to you know, not ward people away or scare people away from coming in and actually having their baby killed or aborted. So when it says isn't viable, many things fall under uh, this particular uh, uh, term as well. And I look this up a lot. It's referring, it, it can even be referring to deformities. It could be referring to maybe like the baby has a deformed arm or a deformed leg. How disgusting right. can you possibly get? I mean, goodness sake and sakes. And a lot of people, you know, in our country, you can become numb to things like this. But when you really take a step back and you start thinking about that baby being born and, and literally you look at the baby, the mother's holding the baby, literally just seconds before that, they could have terminated or ended that baby's life. Terminated or ended that baby's life. I want you to go to Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 6. Now, what's the definition of murder? Now that we've already established what the definition of life is, then we can take our next step to the definition. What is the definition of murder? Murder is the purposeful, the purposeful execution of, of a human being, is what it is. Here's the first mention of murder or killing someone, like the Bible says which is murder here is what it's referring to. <clears throat> murder in the Bible. I want you to know, uh, notice here what is the, the penalty for murder. Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 6 says this. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. And then it says this. For the image, for in the image of God... 
made he man. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter number 27, verse number 25. Notice that if you kill someone or you murder someone, that you yourself ought to be murdered. You yourself ought to be murdered. If you kill someone, you yourself ought to be murdered. Now, I don't care whether it's sanctioned by our government or not. So were a lot of killings throughout history that were obviously under communist uh, order that a lot of people would say that was wrong. So whether the government sanctions it, whether the government okays it, whether the government is supporting it or funding it means nothing. I don't care whether our government funds any sort of murder. It doesn't matter what it is. That is still the, the definition of murder. If it is a living human being and they are innocent and they do not deserve the punishment of death and you kill them, you have murdered them. You have murdered them, and you yourself should be killed. Amen. That's what should happen in the United States of America today. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 27, verse number 25, what the Bible says. Deuteronomy chapter number 27, verse number 25. The Bible says this is the perfect definition, a perfect detail, um, you know, a detail of the scenario of what we see of abortions and medical doctors today. Deuteronomy chapter number 27, verse number 25, it says this. Cursed be he that taketh reward. That's like money or something like that. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. That is the perfect, the perfect explanation of what you have with all these doctors today. That's exactly what is going on. Why are they doing this? What is the reason that they got into this field? Do you want to know why? Because it pays well. That's why. That's the reason why they got into this field. You know what? I don't give a crap. I don't give a crap whether it's even we're talking about the nurses. I don't care. Whoever is an accomplice in this, it doesn't matter whether you're making good money or not. If you, you, know, if you, if you are an accomplice, if you are helping someone, or if you are taking part in any way of the killing of another human being, whether we're talking about a baby or not, you yourself should be put to death. You yourself should be put to death. That's God's law. Amen. That is the perfect law. If you kill someone, if you shed man's blood, you yourself, your blood should be shed. You also should die. You also should be put to death. Now, even, you know, even still, and this would not be okay, but even still, let's say that if a person today went out and they were paid to kill another, let's say, a grown man... Okay, let's say a grown man that didn't deserve to be put to death according to God's law. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be horrible? It'd be terrible, right? But I want you to think about this. How much worse is it really? Because it is worse. How much, how much worse is it really to kill a, 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 a baby? Both are, both are terrible. But I mean, you know, obviously if, the, if this person is not worthy of death, they shouldn't be killed by any means for any reason. It's still not okay. But they've still done a lot of horrible, bad things in their life, haven't they? So if you had to choose, which life would you protect? If I had to choose, if I had to choose to protect any life, it would be an innocent child. Right. It would be an innocent... I mean, if I had to, I wouldn't right. want to choose. But if I had to choose between protecting a baby, an innocent baby's life, or, or a grown man, I'd choose the baby. And you know how warped people's minds are today? It'd be the exact opposite. People want to throw a fuss. People want... See, I, I'm with them. If somebody's killed and murdered, I, I, I think that's terrible and that's wrong too. But where we, are, where we are today in our country, people have been desensitized to the point where they don't care about a child just, just because it's in its mother's womb. Isn't that true? Just because it's in its mother's womb. How much more innocent can you possibly get than a baby that hasn't even taken its first breath yet? It's living by every scientific definition. It's living according to the Bible's definition. It hasn't even lived life yet. It can't even make decisions yet. The, the, you know, the, the, the person that it's going to be referring to as mommy in five to ten years, if they were able to live, takes it into a, you know, takes this baby into a, you know, a doctor's office. And allows some man just to kill it. 
Think about that for a minute. Think about it. what they try to do is they try to, you know, they try to take away the personalization of the child as well. I want you to stop and think about, as I mentioned a moment ago, the 60 million children that have been killed, that have been executed by all of these doctors. There was a real doctor who stood there, and there was a real baby that was in its mother's womb, and he took a real utensil, he took some sort of instrument, he used some sort of salt solution, some sort of chemical, and he ended the baby's life. A baby that that mother would have someday given a name to. A baby that would have grown up and called that woman mommy. He, was, he or she would have had a father. As I said, they would have had preferences. They would have had likes. They would have had friends. They would have had favorite foods. They would have had places they wanted to go. An innocent child before they ever even got to experience any of life. But you have all these people who want to stand here and they want to you know, fight for all the lives of people that have been murdered, grown adults, which I'm with you. I'm not saying that's okay, but why won't you stand up for the innocent children? Right. What is wrong with our nation today? Amen. What is wrong with people today? Right. You know, children, 3,000 kids. I think it's more than that now. I think it's 3,500. 3,500 babies. Children are being killed. They have a heartbeat. They have fingers. They have toes. Yeah, 66% of them are born at eight weeks or at or around eight weeks. But the other, do you know the other percentage isn't prior to that? It's after that. They're more developed. The rest of the percentage is later in life. And you know how fast they're developing at, at that young of age? Even faster. So you wait a month. I mean, it, I don't know exactly what stage, but it's long past where it was at eight weeks. They're killing and murdering human beings. Right. According to God's law, and I'm you know, I I fully I'm not up here standing and playing games. I fully support the execution of every single doctor that has aborted a baby. Amen. I would Amen. sign a bill tomorrow if they asked me. Amen. I would sign a bill tomorrow. I'm not standing up here and playing games. If I if I could, you know, I wouldn't, you know, try to get involved in the politics, but that according to God's law is what they is what they deserve. What better judgment? Right. You want to murder an innocent child? You want to murder an innocent baby? What do you think should happen to you? You think they'd be okay with that? It's disgusting. It's Amen. evil. It's wicked. That's right. All these innocent babies. You know, you know go to, uh, let me have you turn to another passage. Go to Numbers 35, 16. I want you to look at this. You know what? They, they pretended like, oh, you know, it's okay to abort the baby. It's okay to kill the baby. It's okay to, you know, murder the baby only because it's a fetus. But now, all of a sudden, it's okay seconds before birth. It was never about that in the first place. It's obvious it's not anything other than a human being in the first place. You're not fooling me. It was never about that. These people are implacable. That's why they're, 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 they're right now, all it is is, yeah, you, you, you have to have some sort of reason why. You know you, you, you know, you have a health issue, or maybe the child has a health issue. And that's what it is right now. But you know what it will be in the future? Right before the baby's born. Right before the baby's born for any reason, I don't want it. You think we're going to go backwards? You know, as far as you think where we were in time, you think we're going we're gonna to take away these laws? Not a chance. They're going to keep giving more supposed freedoms, the freedom for women to kill their children. They're going to keep giving more and more freedoms to the point where they can just kill their children. There are people, there are politicians who have, and, and I'm almost positive Barack Obama is one of these idiots, these, these devils that signed a bill for infanticide. After the child's born, the mother can choose. I'm not, I don't want to get all the details wrong, but for whatever reason, I don't want to get specifics, if... They, if it comes to the agreement that the child maybe isn't viable or for whatever reason, they could just leave the child or allow the child to die, even after it's born. It never was about, oh, it's not a human being yet. It never was about that. You're a fool if you think that's what it is. It's obvious that it's a human being, and they never care whether or not, oh, it's just a fetus. That was never the discussion in the first place. Look at Deuter or Numbers chapter number 35, verse number 16. It says this, and if he smite him, if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he died, look at this, he is 
a murderer. The murderer <laughs> shall surely be put to death. You know what doctors use, abortion doctors use? They use, a, they use an instrument, don't they? They have all different types of instruments. You know what they're normally made of? Metal. They're normally made of iron. You know what the, the Bible says? If, he, if a, one man smites another man with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. These doctors, these doctors that are performing, uh, performing abortion, they are murderers. Right. The murderer shall surely, shall surely be put to death. Every abortion doctor, every last one of them should be put to death, right. according to the Bible's definition. According to the Bible, according to God's perfect law. If you're a Christian, you should believe the exact same thing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want you to turn to, I want to have you turn now to, uh, have you turn to Isaiah chapter number 49, verse number 1. Isaiah chapter number 49, verse number 1. Now, there was another bill that was passed in the state of, or not passed, I'm sorry, that was proposed in the state of Virginia. I don't know, did anybody think, hear about that as well? There was another bill that was proposed. It was in the state of Virginia that followed up to the bill in New York. And it was basically the exact same bill. But it was just a little bit more loose in the language as far as when the, when the mother could choose to abort the baby or abort the child. And I'm going to read to you, I want to read to you quickly uh, a news article that actually has a quotation from one of the men who supported, maybe wrote or signed, I'm not sure, but he's, he's definitely in support of this bill. They didn't give the specific details about this, but it says this. So this is, like I said, it's a, a, a bill in Virginia, and the bill would allow uh, for women to abort their babies uh, you know, for the same reasons as the other. It says this, for her own health, if her own health is at risk, or if the child has a severe deformity. I mean, that, if that's not child sacrifice, number one, I don't know what is. I mean, what do you think it has to be to bail? What's the reason the mother's sacrificing the child? What's the reason the mother's killing the child? She's sacrificing the child's life for her life. Think of it. Wrap your mind around that for a minute. Why are women getting abortions in the first place at eight weeks, 12 weeks? Because I want to pursue my career. What are they doing? They're literally killing their unborn child so that they can go to college. Are you serious? They're literally killing their unborn child so that they can, you know, live their lives. So that they can party. So that they can do whatever they want. So that they can just get out of the responsibility of this child is what it is. That is, I, you know, it doesn't have to be to Molech. It doesn't have to be to Baal. That is child sacrifice. Right. And this feminist movement that pushes all of the, it, it fit this feminist, it's the exact opposite of feminism. You know, what women should, you know, what women truly in their nature are, and they've been morphed and, and changed in our country today, is their nurturers and their carers. That's what they should do. And they should care for their child. And they should love their baby. But you have all of these women, these supposed feminists, and they're a bunch of just, just, Weirdo freaks is what they are. And they're right. pushing for all these weird, you know, just so that a woman, they literally are fighting for the right for a woman to be able to kill her unborn baby. I mean, it's so wicked. It's so weird. It's, I can't even wrap my mind around it. What's the reason why? So that they can just literally just sleep around and have no responsibility. That's what it is. They right. can just sleep around. They can be a slut. They can be a whore. They can go out to parties. They can get knocked up and have fornication and then go and kill their baby and not have to stand up for the responsibilities of their own stinking actions. It's disgusting. Amen. It's right. child sacrifice. You're a heathen. You're a pagan. You're barbaric. Right. There's nothing different. People think today, like I talked about a couple of weeks ago, people think things are different. There's nothing new under the sun, friend. You're just like all these barbaric nations that sacrificed their children thousands of years ago. Your, your mind is just as warped and just as barbaric and just as hard and, and as careless and as and cold as theirs was. Right. When they offered their baby to that you know, false god, your heart is just as cold and just as
just as unloving as theirs is. You're disgusting. That's right. That's really what it is. Amen. These, all of these women who go out and they are willing to go in and abort their baby, they're murderers. Right. This is what the Bible teaches. You can use examples of this. The Jews are referred to as murderers all throughout the book of Acts. They never laid a hand on Jesus. Not one of them laid a hand on Jesus. Those Roman soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross. The Jews did not land. Do you know what they did? They brought him there. Do you know what these women do? They bring their child there. And you know what the doctor does? He kills them. He's the Roman soldier. They're just like the Jews. You know what? Speaking by the Holy Ghost, you know what the apostles and disciples say all throughout the book of Acts? You're a murderer. You killed Jesus. Here's the thing. All, you know, there, you know, if it's what the Bible teaches, I don't care how many women have done it. Do you know one out of four women? I believe it's one out of four, I don't remember the, the age, but once you get to a certain age, it's like uh, maybe 30, one out of four women have had an abortion. One out of four women, according to the Bible, they should be put to death. If we instituted that law today and we started putting all these abortion doctors to death, this wouldn't be an epidemic in our nation. You know why they'd be fearful, and they should be. Amen. You should be fearful. You should have something that, that you're afraid of to go in there and kill your baby. Right. You weirdo. It's disgusting. People's minds are warped. You know, people people are just what it is is they're self-centered. They're selfish. All they care about is themselves. That's all that it is. Right. All these women, they're worried about their careers. They're worried about their lives. They're worried about their boyfriend. They're worried about all these things, and they kill an innocent, unborn child. I mean, it, it literally, like I said, you know, who is, like, if you were to try to imagine and think of the most innocent thing that exists, it would be an unborn child still in its mother's womb. Right. They, they, they'll suck their thumbs sometimes. I mean, how disgusting do you have to be? Right. And, and, and you have these politicians writing up uh, bills to pass and sign where it gives the right to women to kill their babies all the way up seconds before it's born. Seconds before it, it, it cries out for the first time, starts crying. I mean, it is so wicked and so evil. Right. You know, th this needs to be something, you know, you know, Baptist pastors are not standing up and preaching sermons like this. Right. It's ridiculous. You know why? Because they're afraid. Right. They're afraid that they might have some woman sitting in their auditorium. They're afraid that they might have somebody. What does it matter? Right. Is it what the Bible teaches? Just preach the Bible. Amen. If somebody, according to the Bible, is a murderer, they're a murderer, case closed, period. What's the definition of life, according to the Bible? Conception with child, it's living. If you kill someone that's an innocent person, you take a reward for it. If you murder someone with an instrument of iron, you are a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death, Amen. period. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches. Right. People need to stand up and preach that. And maybe if more pastors were preaching that to their congregations... People within their church wouldn't be doing it. You think it's not happening in churches too? You're out of your mind if you don't think that there are women that grew up in Baptist churches that later in life went and had an abortion. You know why? Because these types of messages aren't preached anymore. That's why their church is going, is, is, you know, going down the route of the devil in every other area of their life too. They're not preaching on fornication. They're, having, they're, they're sleeping around. They're not preaching on adultery. People are committing adultery. They're not preaching on all of these things, drugs, alcohol, all of these things. Why? Why are people ending up the way? That's why. Because it's the pastor's job to stand up and preach this type of message. Amen. Amen. Every pastor should be preaching. Every pastor should be preaching on abortion on a regular basis. This is by far the biggest sin in our country. It's not even close. 60 million, 1.85% of all the people that died in, every, in all the major wars. 1.85% of that 60 million. Wrap your mind around that. No, it's not even 2% of the amount of babies that have been killed died in every major war. The amount of people that died in every major war are not even 2%. It's, shy, it's just shy of 2% of all the babies that have been killed since 1973. That's an insane number. That's an insane number. And, and, and pastors have been pastoring Baptist churches for 10 years and haven't even touched on the subject of abortion. What's wrong with you? That's the reason why we are where we are today. 
Because people are too scared to stand up and preach the Bible. I want you to listen to this. This is what it says here. We're going to end there, and I want to read two verses in Isaiah 49. But I want to read this to you quickly. I want you to listen to this. By the time Virginia Governor Ralph Northam was asked about the bill on a local radio show Wednesday, the controversy had already erupted on social media. He then added fuel to the fire when he said that third tour... Third tor term, excuse me, third term abortions are rare and typically typically occur when an infant is severely deformed or unable to survive after birth. What? Severely deformed. Yeah, you should just go ahead and kill it. It can't make it anyways. Unable to survive after birth. It says this. In this particular example, if a mother is in labor, I could tell you exactly what would happen. The infant would be delivered. Now listen to this. The infant would be delivered. The infant would be kept comfortable. The infant would be resuscitated, if that's what the mother and the family desire. And then he says this. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother, Northam said. You know what that means? That means that the mother and the physicians are going to consult one another while the baby's comfortable, after they've resuscitated it, whether or not they should go ahead and kill the baby. And he's laying there. Let me, let me let you in on a secret in the first place if you're not smart enough to figure this out. All these idiots, these people that are pro-abortion, they, 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 you know, they miss this really big, they, they always want to say, they want to say in these types of cases, yeah, if the mother's life is in, is in threat, we need to go ahead and kill the baby. Hey, moron, even, what do you think the baby's going to dissolve in, in their mother's womb? You have to induce her and she'd have to birth the baby in the first place. There, I literally watched people have a debate on Facebook the other day while they're discussing the delivery. And this, this, this woman is supposedly like a nurse or something, and they're discussing the delivery. And the woman is saying, well, you know, there are cases in which, you know, you should you just go ahead and abort the baby right directly or during delivery. She'd have to deliver the baby anyways. Why not deliver the baby even, even if you have a warped mind and you think you should kill it? Why wouldn't you at least try to give the baby life in the first place? It just shows you don't care. It's not about saving the mother's life. That's not what it's about. It's supposedly about women's rights. That's really what this comes down to. That is one of the most devilish things. I hope you understand that. That's one of the most wicked, satanic agendas that is in our country today is women's rights. Right. Right. That women's rights literally are summarized with this. Women can be a slut and a whore all they want. Right. That's what it all, all comes down to. They want to fight for women's rights to walk around just basically stinking butt naked. They want to fight for women's rights to be able to, like we're talking about the breastfeeding thing. Just women just openly pulling their, their, their shirts up, discovering their entire chest. They want to fight for women's rights on the clothing they're allowed to wear. They want to fight for women's rights in aborting their baby. Why? So the mother doesn't have to stand up for the responsibility of being a slut. That's what it is. You look up the amount of, amount of abortions that take place and see the ages. They're all like 20 to 25 years old practically. They're single, unmarried women. That's who it is. It makes up by and large the majority of them. It becomes so rare when you get it, when women get into their 30s to have an abortion. That's what these rights are all about. Women to be whores. Right. That's what it's about. It's disgusting. And there are men fighting for these rights. There are men fighting for these men in Baptist churches fighting for the right for their women, their, their wife to be able to open breastfeed. What's wrong with you, you, you right. stinking Shit. idiot? Right. You know, that stupid thing that they made where, where Ben the Baptist is like, you guys can come out. Why don't you guys come out? You know, you, you don't have to be afraid anymore. You know what, Ben the Baptist? They, you know, here's the thing. It's funny that when they came out, they weren't openly breastfeeding. It's funny that you guys didn't want to make, you didn't want your, your wife shown on camera openly breastfeeding. I wonder right. why that is. Right, exactly. You moron. Amen. I wonder why that is. You know why? Because they know. They're not stupid. They know that it's wrong. But you know what they're doing? They're pushing the same agenda. These, these, these Baptists. And, and the men. Right. The men are pushing it. You stinking feminists. Right. You stinking <laughs> girls. That's what it is. Bunch of women is what they are. Like it says, they say, oh man, he's saying that like he hates women. 
Like, you know, kind of like in the book of Jeremiah when God says they become his women. Right. Men and women are different, friend. Right. And they become his women. Is what they have. They've become as women. That's right. A bunch of cowards. They're fighting for women's rights. You bunch of stinking weirdos. Amen. Bunch of we. And, and, and whether they understand what what they're really supporting or not is besides the point. But that's the agenda that they're supporting. And that's where it crept in. Is from this 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 uh, crunchy movement is what it's called. Right. The crunchy organic movement. That's where it came in. And the, this specific sect of independent Baptist, no one, no other independent Baptist believes that. Right. None. None. You can say, well, well that doesn't prove it, but I, none. None of them. Not one. So not, you're all alone here, buddy. Right. You're the only one and, and probably the only Baptist in the world that, besides these heathen countries in Africa, and they're all right with people walking around butt naked, too. You're the only Baptist in, in literally, this little sect, this little group of people is the o- are the only Baptist in the United States that thinks it's all right for a woman to, to uncover her chest while she breastfeeds. You can say all day to me, well, we do it modestly. If you have ten children and you breastfeed all of those children, your wife is bound to show her breast numerous times to another grown man that's right. married. Numerous times. Don't, don't, don't kid me. That, you know, you're an idiot if you say that that's not so. Right. If she's just going to, at any moment, because what do they say? Well, the child's hungry, you got to feed him. So when the child's hungry, if your wife does that, any time, right then, just pulls her shirt up, starts feeding the baby, many, many men throughout. I mean, who, what man would be all right with that? Right, right. right. I mean, come on. You know, that's what it is. They're fighting for, the, they're fighting for feminist rights. That's what they are. A bunch of independent Baptists, new IFB are fighting for feminist rights is what it is. And you know what this Northam guy's doing? He's literally saying that even after the baby's born, while it's breathing, while it's alive, we'll just go ahead and kill it. We'll just terminate its life. The doctor, at this point, the doctor and the mother will talk and see what will happen. This is not the end. These people are implacable. It's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse. You know what you need to do? Any opportunity that you get in a conversation about the subject of abortion, you need to tell people how stinking wicked it is. Amen. Man. And how evil it is. I don't care who you're talking to. This is not something you should be holding back at all. It is wicked. It is evil. It is disgusting. It, our country has shed so much blood, it's not even funny. Right. 60 million innocent babies. 60 million innocent children who... Since 1973, who the vast majority would still be living today? Have a life, have a house, have a husband, have a wife. How horrible, how wicked. It's disgusting. Amen. They don't want to try to personalize the children, though, do, you? do they? It's just a fetus. It's, it's foolish. Look at Isaiah. Are you there in Isaiah chapter 49? Isaiah chapter number 49. Uh, Look at Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 1 first. Again, we'll see this talking about uh, Isaiah being called from his mother's womb. It says in 49, verse 1, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. It says this, The Lord hath called me from the womb. He says this, From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. So this is, this is actually a prophecy. Of course, there's an immediate application of Isaiah, another prophecy, of course, of Jesus Christ, if you read on this chapter. But what you see is you see again, I was called from the mother's womb. Every child, the Bible teaches, as we looked at earlier, is fashioned and formed while it's in its mother's womb. The Bible calls it a child. Don't call it a fetus. Call it a child. Call it a baby. God fashions and forms it. God makes these children while they're in his mother's womb. And even before, even while they're you know, at eight weeks and their fingers aren't formed, exactly what those fingers and those toes are going to look like, they're written in God's book. God knows exactly what they're going to look like. God knows exactly what their, what their thumbprint's going to be. He knows exactly what their face is going to look like. He knows exactly everything about them. He's the one that fashions them. He's the one that forms them. I want you to look at Isaiah 49, verse 15. This is the attitude that we should have. It says this, Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Now, that's a rhetorical question, saying that that shouldn't happen. Which, obviously, that shows you how serious and how far gone a lot of people in our country today are. Because they have forgotten their sucking child. They don't care about the, the, the child of their womb, the son of, of her womb. But then it says this. Watch what God says. 
Yea, they may forget. Sometimes they do, like in our case, right? Yea, they may forget. And God says this, yet will I not forgive thee. Isn't that a great promise to add for all these children? The Bible teaches that if a child dies, if a child dies, a baby dies, or even, even, even an older child, maybe three years old or so, four, five, even six, seven sometimes, before the age of accountability, before the law comes and they understand the law and then transgress that law, before they understand right and wrong, if they die, the Bible teaches they go immediately to heaven. Amen. David's Amen. child died. Dave, the, the child that David had with Bathsheba died. And David says that the child's not going to be, be coming back to him, but he's going to be going to the child. Why? Because when he dies, he gets to go to heaven and be with it. I, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, but that's going to be interesting to me, 60, however many people it is that just, you know, are in heaven one day. You know, they're there with God. You know what happened? God cared about them. God cares about all of the children while they're in their mother's womb. Amen. You know, we should too. We shouldn't forget about them. We shouldn't let, this is not something to just blow. This is something we need to keep in the back of our minds all the time. You understand? That's why I read those statistics first. This is by far the most bloodshed by any country ever. And it's an innocent baby that's being killed every day. Three thousand. Can you imagine a fight like that? Just every day, even a war, a battle, I'm saying. Think about that. In a battle, if it was a continuous battle for years, three thousand people dying a day. That's insane. This isn't even a battle of grown men and grown women. It's three thousand unborn, innocent children being murdered by their parents, being murdered by their mother every day. God will never forget about it. We shouldn't either. We should, you know, we should pray, number one, that justice would be brought. This should be something that's important to us because once we understand how big the deal is. We should pray that justice will be brought upon the people that have done this wickedness, especially those that have perpetrated and brought this into our country. Number one, we should pray for the families. You know what you should do? You should try to interject in situations when you get the opportunity. And explain to people why this is so wicked and wrong when this gets brought up. It's evil. Fight for Fight for that baby's life. That's what you need to be fighting for. Amen. Don't forget about those children. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, for uh, being a God that, that cares for the innocent, that cares for the weak. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, that we serve a just God. A uh, just God and a Savior. And we know that you will, uh, you will uh, recompense to those what they deserve, dear God. We, we ask you, dear Lord, that you, would, uh, that you would be with us, that you would allow us to uh, have opportunities where we're able to share the truths with people that maybe to some extent are ignorant about the, the, uh, the, the seriousness or the severity of abortion and, and how, how it is murder, dear Lord. We ask you that you would help us to shine light on that subject and more people can know about this. Help us to lift up, our, lift up our voice and help us to have the attitude that you have and not to forget about those babies and to fight for the rights of those babies. We love you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.